Welcome to the Movies Pal, your friendly neighborhood mastercast. Back with you once again with my special guest, Mr. Cult of Cinema himself, Aaron Pinn, and Mr. Tony of the Dead. Don't worry, the theater's crowded, but we have a seat saved just for your keister because honestly, it's not a party if your keister's not involved. Well, pal, we're talking sequels, specifically Scream 2. Of course, the year after the first one was released, they rushed into production on the second one, and uh, we got a college-age version of uh, Sydney and Randy, and uh, their adventures with a new Ghostface killer mm, kind of tangentially connected to Part 1. Uh, I'll talk about my feelings about that. By the way, spoilers, if you haven't seen Part 2, just heads up on that. Uh, Scream Two is a college-based slasher movie. It's an interesting direction to take. I've honestly never been a fan of that location, but it is what it is. Aaron, tell us a little bit about Scream Two. Love the, actually, I do love the college location. I don't love everything about Scream Two, but I do really dig that. I think we got another great cast of characters here. Um, Tim the Elephant, again, fantastic in this one here. Uh, there's a whole ton of new characters brought in. Some are only brought in for small roles. You know, we got Buffy herself, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller. You know, she goes on doing what we did last summer. Uh, she, you know, she's a prom queen there. Uh, but uh, overall, Scream Two is a, it, it's a it's a fun little film. There are some iffy sequences, like the opening, which although it looks really cool when you're watching it, it absolutely makes zero sense. You know, it's, it's funny you mentioned the kill because I've never liked the opening kill in this movie. I think I I, I like what they're trying to do with it. I think it I think it's interesting, but you're right. There's no way that that uh, he would put his head right by the where the killer would do it, yeah. and like trying to get that knife through that wall would almost be impossible. Um, it, yeah, that opening kill is really rough. And then, e even though I will say Jada Pinkett's death is probably the most tragic and and painful to watch on screen because like her acting is so, uh, man, it's heart wrenching. She's like, ah! she's like screaming for help and like fuck, man, this is supposed to be a fun movie. What the hell? Um, but, uh, yes, it's, it's not a great opening, but, uh, I, I do like that it establishes the stab franchise and I'm, I'm glad that they brought that, that meta gag back in from the first movie. Oh, you know, Tori Spelling and all that. Um, this is, yeah, this, this is a movie that to me, i I liked it, but I've never really loved it. And I think it's just cause I love the first one so much and I like the Woodsboro setting so much that taking it out of Woodsboro kind of cut it down for me. Um, Tony, let's talk about Scream Two. What are your thoughts on on what, what are your thoughts on the movie in general? Well, I, I, I've as far as sequels goes, I think it's a I think it's a good sequel. Definitely has a, a great cast of characters, um, and of course, you know, we lose one of the ones that everybody I'm sure went no. Okay, well, let's talk about that. What, what what are the ones? I mean, obviously, Randy is one of them. Obviously, Randy. That was like such a, a heartbreak there. Yeah. But it was he had such a great performance before that, you know, like the fuck you and yeah. all that stuff. Like, and when they grabbed him into the van, it was just like, oh my god, they're killing Randy. Like, it's this sucks. But I always felt that they shouldn't have killed Derek. Yes, he is like actually a good guy. Right. But they had it, and he didn't know that though, because you had the subtle hints of like he was kind of weird, like get cutting his arm, and then he's like, well, "I guess I'm just lucky you showed up when you did." He's right. like all weird, you know. So it's like, is he the killer? But then when you find out he's not the killer, and she instantly puts her hand there to try to save him, yeah. it's like, it's so it's like, no, why are you killing him? He's a good guy, you know. I I could have seen him making it to the end, and he obviously doesn't. But uh, yeah, I always hated that that kill as well and if i can say the one sequence i don't like and i get why they do it but i don't like it is okay. when they're all dancing in her class oh. <laughs> and and like i understand what they're getting at but i just i think it's like they could have just cut it so are you are you talking about the the, the theater class uh, yeah situation? Okay. okay that's different yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah um for me uh the the uh, Aaron, uh, for me, that's the scene I don't like from this movie. When he starts singing to her, I'm like, what the hell's going on? This is... Oh, oh come on, man. I think I love you. <laughs> that's that's cringe. 
that part is cringy, but like, it's so cringy. Like, what is this coming <laughs> from, man? I, I don't know. I, I never, I never liked it, but I will say that it does make Derek an interesting character. It does make this a unique movie because it has those elements in it. But I, I just, I just, I, it never gelled with me that he. But it sets see. up so much, like because this scene here, it's a, it shows not only just kind of shows the character of Derek itself, mm -hmm. but it's going to be the reason that Derek gets taken out and uh one get, is more suspicious two becomes a victim because it is from this here basically where he goes and gives him you know gives him his uh his jacket right uh yeah, that you know he's got to pay a necklace necklace yeah. yeah he's got to pay then like you know he's got to pay the fraternity says you know he's got to pay for that and this is his downfall this is derek's downfall uh, i love jerry connell uh you know fellow canadian and of course stand by me <laughs> One of my favorite movies of all time, by the way. Right. Uh, he's in that. And as I'm watching this trailer, oh my God, doesn't Jamie Kennedy's Randy look like a hobbit? Like, he does. Uh, <laughs> with that haircut. Looks like an elf, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so let's um, um, let's talk about Randy because that was the big thing in this movie. And, and honestly, this is the reason I docked this movie a point is because they got rid of Randy. Originally, he wasn't even supposed to be in this damn movie. Nope. He had, to, he had to like fight to get in. I was like, "What? You're not gonna have Randy in the fucking movie? That's crazy." So luckily, he's in it. We do lose him, and while it is a good scene, and and he's really good in it, um, again, it's another kill that doesn't really make sense to me. Like, yeah, I mean, it's out in the open. There's guys playing music and stuff like that. He gets killed in the van, but I, I think uh, at one point, a somebody did a breakdown of who who could have killed who. And this has to have been Debbie Sold. Yeah, it's the only one that she kills, actually. Yeah, and all and the rest like, are, are the other guy. Right, like so. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because she says, "I got a little knife happy." Um, so, I, how the hell did she pull this guy into a van, and, like throw him around like he was a rag doll? And uh, I, I don't know. I, I feel well, like it's it, Randy. It, <laughs> well, yeah, but still, I don't know. I feel like um, I, I feel like they, they could have given him a more maybe more of a movie death like in a, maybe he should have been the one dying in the theater I think that would have been more poetic but you know it, it, it is what it is uh, um, maybe it's like when the mother pull op, lifts the car off the baby or something you know maybe she just like you can't talk about my Billy like that and I you know got that adrenaline that's exactly. the only way I that's could think it of is, it because that's why it's so ferocious is because this is why we get like Debbie Salt like killing in mm -hmm. this sequence here uh, I'm not sure if we're doing spoilers. <laughs> I'm sorry if we don't. Yeah, no, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, but it's been like, uh, you know, and it's one of the most vicious deaths. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's that's the reason for it. The other ones, the killer's having fun. You can tell the killer's having fun with them. Uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, you know, it's a bigger person. When, uh, you know, when Buffy's character, I'm sorry, I don't remember the character's name, but C when she gets C like, C thrown off, she gets literally thrown off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a little I, upset know. with her death, too, because I actually liked her character. Well, here's a, another problem I have with this movie is that there's too many characters, and mm -hmm. and and we don't get enough time to really hang out with them. That's, that's another problem with Scream Three: too many characters and not enough, you know, face time with everybody. Do you want to say? Sisters. What's that? That this is more cameo esque than than Scream Three is. Yeah. Uh, but so like, because uh, we got Rebecca Gayhart, Portia de Rossi, like mm -hmm. people like that in here, and they're literally not used at all. They're pretty much like uh, window dressing. Hmm. I, and that, that's it was like oh man they're making a scream too can we be in it and like, can we just walk on and say two lines you know like that's 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 how big the franchise got that that's all the people wanted to do is just be in it for like two seconds and, but mention and, the best cameo mention the best cameo who, who's the best cameo luke wilson that's your lillard oh well yeah <laughs> yes I, I, I was gonna say even 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 Stu kind of makes a cameo um um but yeah uh, luke wilson i mean there, there's so many people in this and uh I don't know. I feel like that bloats it. I think the movie suffers from that because it, it, it the, the, the focus isn't there for me. There it is. This is one of the reasons that this doesn't work as well as the first film. Okay. Uh, basically, the first film, we get to know Stu, the, the group. There's not too many characters. We get to know the cast of characters. So we know Stu. We know Billy. Uh, it, it makes sense when at the end, they're the, they're, they're the killers. When the killers are revealed here, we haven't seen enough of Timothy Oliphant. Uh, and every time he's come on the screen, he's been super suspicious. I'll be mm. honest with you, I knew he was the killer in this film. <laughs> it was it was the easiest one to figure out. Mm. When Debbie Salt came out as the second killer, I was so disappointed. You, I could literally like just feel my expectations dropping <laughs> to the floor. I hated 
they're, they're like, hey, let's twist around cycle. Let's do like a Friday the 13th type of thing. Mm. And have, you know, have the killer mom. I didn't like that. Uh, what I did like, and the only part of this, the, the whole, like the, like the ending thing I liked was, uh, like for the reasoning, mm -hmm. his reasoning. Like, I get that. Like he wants, the, he's not somebody that's not, he wants to be family. He wants to go on trial. Like this mm -hmm. is the era of the OJ Simpson trial and stuff like that. This makes total sense. Celebrity tra murder trials were a huge thing. So mm -hmm. for somebody like that's kind of twisted, like Elephant's character to want to do that, it makes perfect sense in this time period. And uh, that that alone was fantastic. They could have put somebody else in there. We didn't need like uh, a big connection to the first film. I actually think we shouldn't have had it. We should have severed that. Uh, you know, that's a good point about the family connection because establishing that in part two, now your entire franchise has to be family based. And then we when then we'll talk about part three when we get to part three. But part three, I think, falls apart because they they have to find a way to connect it back to family. And um, uh, real quickly, let's just uh, talk about our favorite kills. I really like Hallie's death scene. Uh, they're they're stuck. They 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 get uh, uh, evacuated by the the police, the detectives, the plainclothes detectives, and um, uh, the Ghostface attacks the cops, kills the cops. There's a big car crash, and the girls have to crawl over a knocked out Ghostface, and uh, and then uh, you think oh he's gonna wake up and stab them, but he doesn't, and somehow he magically jumps out of the car and comes around somehow and and takes Hallie out. And I, and I think it's kind of just even though it's a quick stab and she dies um i like the whole build up to that scene so i think that's probably my favorite death in in the movie aaron what would be your favorite well honestly you just said it uh, uh so that's fine. <laughs> yeah but by far and large actually um but uh just for like just for pure shock we'll go with uh with derek's death okay I mean, it's uh it's it's short it's you know it's there's not a lot to it but because I was so invested in Jerry Connell's character, and I'm the one person apparently that did like the serenading sequence in the, in the <laughs> film, uh, I really, you know, if there's a character that I could relate to in this film, totally Jerry. And because uh, I would do that, I'm cheesy like that. <laughs> do that. I love it. Well, and uh, let's say I may have done something similar. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I uh, no, Derek's death. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, Tony um it's it's not even one of the characters like that's a main character or anything i i always thought the most brutal death was that cop that he hit with the car and then and, and then the the boards were just kept hitting his head and then like, you see the dummy or whatever it is like you know and it's just like that and then it let alone a pipe goes right through his freaking skull and yeah, like, yeah. i always thought that has to be my favorite kill because it's so brutal looking I want to give it five only just because nostalgia, but I'm not. I'm 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 gonna go with four, four because I don't feel the the kills are as strong. I I I, I think this is a little too long. Um, I, I do love the stuff with Dewey and Gale. We haven't really spoken about them, but I love how they you know reconnect and they spend a lot of time together and they're like Scooby doing the whole thing. Uh, I really enjoy that. Um, but I I. I, I it, I don't know. There's just something. There's a lot of elements in this movie that just don't work for me. They're not as satisfying as the first one, but it is a good sequel, and Randy is alive for most of it, so it's gonna get four stars from me. Aaron, as much as I've had problems with this one, and and I have, I do love this film. Uh, like as as bad as I think like the the solution is, it's uh, it's still gonna be like it's a four and a half because it's just that well shot, it's that well edited, and you know. I know Randy had to, you know, be cut off because he had to go to the Shire and all that. But, uh, <laughs> from that, you know, I actually did. I really like the film. It's the, uh, I, I can watch any of these over and over again. And you're going to be, you may be surprised if I thought some part three. So we'll, uh, once, when we get to that, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, we have a lot to talk, to, talk, talk about with that one. Um, Tony. Um, I would say it's probably a four because, uh, you know, again, I like the original way more, but this actually made it, you know, made me upset when people got killed, you know, like genuinely, like where I was upset, like with Randy, Derek, um, you know, and, and, and we didn't mention, but Cotton Weary, having him come back into this. He was great. He did a I great job at it. Like, yeah, and, and if you think about it, he's kind of the hero in a way. She even gives him like, talk to him. Yeah. You know, but he could have like if it went the other way, there couldn't have been. There was no more three. There's no scream three. 
Right. So, right. Yeah. And I like how fun. awkward he is in the movie too. Uh, he's good. Like, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, Gail. Um, he's like kind of a like a scared dork. <laughs> <laughs> but, um okay well there you go those are our thoughts on on screen too a, a you know a, a, a slasher classic any way you slice it let's call it a day uh aaron tony thank you for joining me gentlemen and uh i want to thank you for joining us here in the theater it's time to close said theater down i'm going to grab the curtain pull it across the silver screen and we will bid you adieu we'll be back we're going to be talking about part three and part four and then leading up to my uh, review spoiler free of part five and then sunday we'll be doing a, a big old live spoiler discussion with a whole bunch of people and then, then we can all either air our grievances or celebrate a masterful <laughs> sequel we'll see what happens um but i hope you'll stick around but until then we're gonna bid you adieu